Susan Seiler here with week 18 cycle two science equipping video. There are two experiments. They're both about simple machines. It'll be a great way to end this semester, excuse me, this quarter. And they seem really simple, but they are fun because simple machines are awesome and fun. All right, so let's get started with number 184 lifter. And um, we are going to be discovering simple machines. In this case, a screw. And a screw consists of an inclined plane. Um, could also, I think, be called a winding wedge. Um, and it's really about having mechanical advantage. So you can talk about what those words mean. Um, you can ask them if they know of any other simple machines, pulleys, levers, etc. And a little bit about what those um sorry my cat's distracting me what those are um, what those do so i am in my guest room and i have my office table set up here and um let me fix my hair and it doesn't give me the best view to show you what's on the table but i think um i think it'll still be fine i'll hold things up for you all right this one's easy so you are going to talk about the purpose how does the screw work ask them see if they know get them to where they're like I don't know how a screw works. Maybe somebody has an idea and let's verify it. Oh, that's an interesting, that's an interesting hypothesis. Let's verify, let's, let's test it. So here's our material. Every student will have, oh, seriously, I just dropped it down. All right, so a big package of screws and um, these are wood screws, wood, wood screws number 12, that's what I have. And here we go, here we go. All right, so the head of the screw in one hand and your fingers down here, and then you'll simply turn the screw and observe what happens. And as you turn the screw one way, it moves down or your fingers move up. And as you turn the screw the other way, the screw moves up and your fingers move down. So there you go, mechanical advantage. It's a great time to talk about also righty tighty, lefty loosey. When you turn things to the right, it tightens. When you un turn things to the left, it loosens them. That is a principle of screws. And the objective really is to get them to wonder. So have them start at the bottom and follow that incline plane all the way to the top. Have them look at it and to question it and and wonder how that works. Hold on, I'm gonna shut my door because my kids are talking. But um, if you have a screw at home, I want you to do this too. I want you to get that and do a little wondering yourself. And I think that will equip you more to help your students wonder um, in class. And um, you can see why that works in your Van Cleves. So that is a good place to look. All right, let's talk about number 185 ramp. So you will have half sheets of paper. Every student will have ruler, um, pencils, paper, scissors, and there will be tape. So we are going to discover a simple machine called an incline plane. And an incline plane is a ramp which requires less strength to lift or lower things. Again, mechanical advantage. Where do we see ramps? Lots of places, right? Um, to, to deliver things, wheelchair ramps, all sorts of things that reduce the amount of work to go um, vertical. Because a ramp takes you from here to here in less effort than would be required to just lift it straight up vertically. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, on a screw, a screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a center. And we're going to show that even here in this experiment. So our purpose is can an inclined plane reduce the amount of work um, we need to move an object up a mountain? I think that was related to something that was in the Van Cleves. So we are going to start by drawing a five inch square on our paper. So younger classes, 
Um, I will have some pre-made for you just in case you run out of time or have less parent helpers in your class that day. But other um, classes, I really want your students measuring. I think this is a good opportunity for them to practice the skill measuring and drawing. Um, you can talk about the idea of measure twice, cut once, a good carpenter rule that um, by being careful in our measuring and measuring twice and checking it, we then need to make one cut and it's accurate versus being wasteful and um, maybe having to, to recut something. So um, as I measured from this side of the paper, as I measured out five inches, I measured there and then I took my ruler down a little bit and measured and marked another five inch here. It's it's accurate, you get the gist of it. And I marked another spot. And that is going to help when I go to draw my line, I'm gonna have two places to line up my ruler to help make sure that it's straight. Let's see if I can, you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. But now I'm, I'm more assured that this line I'm going to make across here to draw my square, this is the five inch square down here, that that is going to be straight. So I'm gonna draw my line there. Good, so now we have our, I'm gonna cut along that line, and now we have our five inch square. Then you need to, according to the directions, draw a line corner to corner, diagonally, a diagonal line across the square, and then cut it. So you're left with that, a triangle. Then you take your triangle and you color along the longest edge of the paper triangle with a pencil. So you will literally make sure the students have a placemat down on the um, table, maybe the scrap that they just used to cut from and they're going to color along this line. And I will show you, here we go. Okay, they're gonna color along here, along that edge, so that they can see the inclined plane going up the pencil more easily, okay? Does that make sense? Is that close enough? There we go, that's better. Okay, so now you have your paper and your pencil. How we do it is short edge, let me show you, here we go. Short edge where they're going to slide down the ramp from the top. Imagine it's a big hill. They're gonna slide down the ramp and then you tape it on your pencil like so. Okay, so one of the blank edges where the point is at the top and they're able to slide down. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Then, so you have it taped. Then you simply turn, turn it and wrap it around. So now you have an inclined plane. And so the question is, is it less work to get up the mountain like this going around or is it easier just going straight up? The inclined plane totally makes it a lot easier. That's how cars get up mountains. When we were in Germany, we hiked up many, many, many of these to get to the top of the castles. We drove up many and hiked up many um, because they're always up on top of hills. <laughs> that's, where, that's where they keep the castles. So um, that is that. And so some of the questions, so this is an inclined plane. This is, this is how, how that works. And they can follow it and see that it also matches up with what's happening in the, with the screw. Now they might wanna take this off and see if there's another way to configure it that would um, make it more work, less work. They might be able to do that. Um, some other thinking deeper questions. How do you think friction plays a role in the amount of work needed to move an object? How might the angle of the slope 
affect the amount of work needed to move something? Is there anything besides friction or slope angle that may change the amount of force needed to move an object up the inclined plane? So those are some questions to think deeper about. I'm sure you have some too. I hope this video was helpful. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, no, that's all. I'll see you Friday, ladies. Bye.